Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Talk. I'm your host, Carl Hodgson. With me today is Kevin Boudreau. Today we're talking about ionizers. So Kevin invented the ionizer after being struck in the head by lightning twice in one day. Tell us about that, Kevin. It was like the great outdoors. I was uh, struck in the head by lightning, uh, positive and negative ions running through my body, and I had a great idea about providing cleaner air uh, to all of our friends and family. That's ridiculous. What do you have in your cup today, Kevin, for all those viewers out there? Uh, a little bit of Dr. Pepper. This is coffee talk. Oh, sorry. Didn't You're get on the, the memo. Wrong show. We're running on the fly here. So today we're talking about your ionizers, Kevin. Yes. Uh, what a lovely machine they are. I have one in my, in my home, and they work great. So tell us about them. How do they work? Well, we're surrounded by a wall of ionizers, and they include two products, the Ion 1K and the Ion 4K. They are cleverly named to indicate the spaces they're designated for. The Ion 1K is uh, set aside for spaces of 1,000 square feet, and the Ion 4K is designated for areas of about 4,000 square feet. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What if you have an area that's 2,000 square feet then uh, you're, or, or 5,000? Uh, then, Kevin, you're in trouble. Did you think about this before? Uh, you're asking me algebra questions on the fly. If you've got 2,000 square feet, I recommend two 1Ks. Ah, yes. And if you have 5,000 square feet, I recommend one of each. So uh, what they Brilliant. do is they convert uh, your, your standard 115-volt uh, electrical outlet electricity, uh, that 115-volt power, gets put through a transformer. And it tra transforms that energy into 4,000 volts. And those 4,000 volts are then converted into millions and billions of positive negative ions uh, that are then em emitted uh, via an industrial fan motor. So uh, they're really, really great units. And through that dispersion of positive and negative ions, uh, we charge and provide polarity uh, to all the molecules in the air. So all the molecules in the air uh, suddenly have a positive or a negative charge. And with that uh, electrical charge, uh, those molecules will seek out molecules of the opposite charge mm. uh, and therefore uh, gaining neutrality, uh, more neutrality uh, than Switzerland has historically achieved. That's amazing. Yes. So w this invention, uh, what was it first invented mm. to do, right? Because I see two things here. I see two stickers. Yes. I see Ion Clean Air and I see National Flooring Equipment. What's, what's going on there, Kevin? That's a great question. So we, uh, you're asking about the history of the ionizers and then how uh, National Flooring uh, Equipment and Ion Clean Air uh, came about to distribute these products. So uh, back in the 1940s when World War II was going on and uh, the newspapers were the uh, central authority on uh, information dissemination, they had to print out tons and tons of newspapers. Uh, so in order to uh, meet that volume, mm. they incorporated ionizers into printing presses oh. so that the ink would dry faster to the paper uh, so that they could share information faster. Uh, the same principles are at play with natural flooring equipment and ion clean air ionizers. Uh, on the natural flooring equipment side, we're looking at surface preparation equipment uh, users and, and, and contractors. They're on a lot of dirty job sites. They're on uh, such dirty job sites, OSHA began regulating the air quality on job sites about two, three years ago. Uh, and that's when it was really meaningful enough for us to incorporate the ionizers into our product lineup as we were aiming to tackle concrete dust, sawdust, and all these odd ambient dusts uh, that are on job sites. Uh, the main concern was uh, preventing silicosis. So silicosis is when somebody inhales silica dust and that silica dust resides permanently uh, in your lungs. That's nasty. And then uh, a little bit of an infection develops, and, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you got silicosis. So we want to prevent that. Uh, we think it's a really, really dangerous, harmful, toxic uh, byproduct of, d of dirty air job sites. Mm -hmm. So that's when National Flooring Equipment brought these products into the product lineup, and uh, the aim was to bring cleaner air uh, to the job site. On the Ion Clean Air side, we are uh, marketing uh, the same products uh, to facilities managers of small and medium-sized facilities. So we're talking about schools, mm -hmm. uh, houses mm -hmm. of worship, restaurants, retail, commercial buildings, uh, the same places where uh, uh, we rip out the flooring. So after we're done ripping out the flooring and, and, and there's a new installation and a new group of people go inside, uh, we, that job site uh, in a few months after is still a great, great um, uh, place f mm. to sell ionizers. So uh, when you're looking at our competition, 
Our competition lives in the ductwork. They live in the HVAC systems. There's uh, the commercial buildings that are on the larger side. They've got the budget. They know how uh, bipolar ionization provides cleaner air. Uh, casinos and hotels already use this technology. Casinos use it to uh, get that, get rid of that tobacco smell, that Ooh. cigarette smoke that lingers in the in in the casino. Uh, they use bipolar ionization to get that tobacco odor uh, out of the breathable air and down to the ground. Hotels use it so that you can't smell the guest who was in the room before you. Are you serious? Yes. So this technology has been around since World War II. It's used in casinos. It's used in hotels. And now we've made it uh, portable so that you can stick it into uh, any, any room, any area. It's a, it's a great addition for all of those who plan to still have Christmas dinner, uh, you know, a secret family dinner at Christmas time. Uh, who knew it? In 2020, you can ionize your home. You can get your ionic density up really, really high so that as new germs are introduced into the environment, uh, they're driven immediately down to the ground. Right. Um, so since the 1940s, various businesses and various entities have been using the ionizers to get really, really fine particles uh, down to make gravity work faster. The printing press, ink to paper, faster. Hotels, Various odors, out of the breathable air. Uh, casinos, using it to get the tobacco odor, out of the breathable air. And now, today, with coronavirus, uh, a huge, huge concern. Uh, the ionizers are a great uh, piece of technology that will bring the coronavirus out of the breathable air, down to the ground, raining millions and billions of positive and negative ions, ripping apart the protein membranes of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the virus that causes the COVID-19 disease in humans, rips it apart at the DNA level, preventing it from further infection. So, wow, so I've heard you say before that it pops the virus like a balloon, is that true? Yes, yes, and so. And how does that work? Uh, the uh, positive and negative uh, oxygen and uh, hydrogen molecules, mm. the hydroxyls mm. and the, uh, the negative uh, oxygen molecules, they, these are the ions, the specific ions that penetrate the protein membrane of the uh, viral pathogen. And, and truly, uh, at a molecular level, uh, it's like popping a balloon. Um, and, and really, uh, it's about uh, that, that agglomeration and that sterilization uh, phenomenon that Mother Nature already provides uh, for billions of years. I'm glad you said that. What was that word again that you said? Agglom uh, agglomeration. Agglomeration. Uh, we'll have a little spelling bee in the comment section. Uh, we'll get you a, a nice, handsome discount on a, uh, on a future ionizer purchase if you can spell agglomeration. Where's that discount coming from, Tim? Uh, from, from all the ions that we're generating. Um, uh, As you mentioned in the comment section, please ask questions uh, if you're interested uh, in any of these units or, more, or want more information. You can private message your phone number. We'll give you a call, uh, and we have discount codes, or we'll put you through to one of our uh, trusted distribution partners. So uh, you were talking about, what were you talking about? The duct work. Now, how is this different than an air scrubber? We see tons uh, of air scrubbers out there. Yes. That's another similar product, right? So uh, you know what? We're going to answer your question, and I'm just going to describe the operation of the ionizer. Let's do that. Yeah. So uh, the way an ionizer works is the air will pass through the filtered end first. So the filters are really designed to keep the ion generation rods uh, in, in mint condition, in perfect working order. So there'll be a framed pre-filter, then a frameless uh, pre-filter, and then an F9 main filter, which has MER14 uh, grade filter inside. You know your filters. A very, very nice fibrous material. That is medical mm. grade. Uh, the MER13 is, uh, is, the, is the threshold to which t for which to be considered uh, medical grade. We're at MER14, a little bit better. So clean air passing over uh, uh, three filters. Uh, then there, uh, the, the, there's the ion generation rods. These are the units that are creating positive and negative uh, uh, ions uh, and in high, high volume. We're mm. talking uh, millions per second, billions over minutes, uh, trillions over hours. Um, and then they're distributed through a uh, industrial fan motor. So uh, we're talking uh, about 2,500 CFM, really, really, really uh, robust uh, air movement power. Mm. Um, and, and those ions, they, they go out into the atmosphere, they go out into the environment, and they do the work for us. Uh, they're the ones that are making gravity work faster hmm. for really, really fine particles, whether they're uh, germs, bacteria, uh, uh, viruses, um, uh, volatile organic compounds, um, 
pollen. Uh, dog hair. Do dog hair, dandruff. Um, so everything that really should not, uh, should not be in the air is brought out of the breathable air. It's brought down to the ground. Now, when we look at the uh, competitive products, uh, they're trying to trap uh, the bad things, the bad stuff. Um, right, right. And they'll, they'll talk about how uh, they've got HEPA filters, and you know, HEPA filters are some of the best filters on the market. Uh, but they will only trap um, items, pollutants, pathogens, mm. contaminants, uh, that measure 0.3 microns and larger. Okay. Now, this machine will bring down anything that's in the air that's about 0.1 micron and bigger. So wow. those, that nice little gap uh, that from that 0.1 micron to that 0.3 micron range, that's where, we're, where we've got the, the pollens, uh, the germs, the bacteria, the virus. So uh, that's what the ionizer does. It brings all that bad stuff down to the ground. Now we're looking at the competitive products. Those competitive products and their filters can't trap uh, all those bad things. So they keep cycling through the air. That makes things more dangerous if you're talking about contaminants, pollutants, viruses. Especially if you've got multiple air scrubbers so uh, on a job site. So you're circulating that through the air at a, at a high rate. That's not good. Times how many boxes uh, you have on a job site. And w the job sites I've been on, I'm looking at six of these things. Yeah, easily, right? So uh, we take a different approach. We're not trying to trap the bad stuff. We're trying to bring the bad stuff out of the breathable air down to the ground. Makes sense. The filters on here are just to protect the, the genius inside. How often do you have to change the filters? Uh, depending on the job site, right? So if you're in a retail environment, if you're in a church environment, school environment, you've got c clean air already. And we need to get that bacteria, those germs, those viruses out of the air. You can clean these a part of your, uh, your normal vacuuming routine. You can just uh, clean the excess, the outside. Okay. If you're in a more industrial environment, uh, and, you're, and you're in one of these uh, sawdust or the concrete dust type applications, those type of dirty job environments, uh, you're going to want to change them every job. Uh, uh, if it's gray, it's change gray it out. Make it go away. Yeah, please, yes, thank you. Uh, are you available for trademarking? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh. We'll talk to my agent after this. I would like to pay you in ionizers. <laughs> Perfect. We can do that. Better than uh, other currency. All right, so... Uh, Let's talk about if, if you're a, a rental company, right? If you're okay. one of our rental customers, how do you offer this out to the marketplace? Um, that's a great question. Uh, the best thing about the ionizer is, is, is the uh, target market is such a wide group of possible uh, customers, right? When we're talking about uh, uh, getting back to normal, you know, socialization and, and getting, getting people back together, that's one of the main aspects of uh, conducting a, a, a prosperous business or mm -hmm. uh, having a meaningful church group or uh, just kicking back with uh, friends and family. Um, or, you know, it's holiday time, fundraisers are going on, uh, that, that, that telethon environment where, you know, everybody's trying yep. to meet the sales end and meet the year end number and uh, really get together and uh, make one last final uh, productive push for 2020. Uh, we're used to doing all, all on, together under one roof. So if I was a rental company, uh, I would look to help people return back to normal uh, by putting these ionizers not only on the dirty job sites where we're doing shop blasting and grinding and scraping and uh, scarifying and all the mechanical removal of uh, uh, various applications, but you can also sell it to just about anywhere where you're going to have more than 10 people congregate. Uh, get those 10 people to congregate with peace of mind, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that there's going to be cleaner air uh, in that environment. Um, my recommendation is if you're going to get a, a, a group of people together, turn one of our ionizers on 24 hours in advance, uh, keep it running, and build up a really, really high level of ionic density so that as those pollutants, those contaminants, those uh, particulates get introduced, they're immediately brought out of the breathable air and down to the ground. It's awesome. You know, my, my brother and sister-in-law, they've got a couple of yoga studios, in one in Minneapolis, one in St. Paul called Up Yoga. They invested in two one Ks like 24, 24 weeks ago, roughly. And since then they had over 5,000 people visit their studios for in-person yoga sessions or whatever you call them, yoga classes. And they've had zero cases of COVID transmission. So something to be really proud of. So great machine, Kevin, way to go. I got uh, one, one uh, personal anecdote. Uh, my wife and I, we are saving for a new air condition and a new uh, uh, water heater, right? So f for all the uh, air and water uh, that's in our home, all we really care about is the temperature. Uh, f for the air condition, you know, we're saving up. We're trying to get our, uh, 
uh, new unit in before the Colorado desert heat comes in and temperatures are over 100 degrees. Uh, and the same thing with the water heater. Mm. Just really, really want my hot showers in the morning, uh, regardless of how cold it is. Uh, and I was telling her, you know, it's really remarkable that we really only care about comfort. Uh, and if 2020 has taught us anything, is we really need to care about health and safety yeah, and the quality point. of our air. So uh, we've, we've budgeted to get an ion on 1K in our home uh, so that we can experience the benefits of cleaner air, uh, as well as it being at 72 degrees, 24 hours a day, Perfect. 12 sure. months a year. So sure. um, just thought that was a, an interesting tidbit is, you know, we're all masked up, uh, you know, when we're not on camera. Uh, but uh, air quality is such a huge concern, and it should be a requirement uh, for uh, work, school, play. Uh, air quality needs to be uh, uh, priority number one for 2021 and going forward. So I was. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, Is that you, Mike Ward? Oh, you you want uh, yeah. So the question is, uh, should you open a window or should you keep the windows closed to build up the ionic density? And the answer to that question is yes. You should close the windows. Uh, you want to build up the uh, ionic density. Um, that'll start getting everything uh, that's not supposed to be in the air and down to the ground. Uh, when you uh, open up the windows. Uh, you'll uh, introduce a lot of uh, neutral air. Um, and while it's fresh, clean, and you know, nice outside air, um, there could be some pollens, there could be some, uh, we have uh, fires here all the time, wildfires, and that's where we have some volatile organic compounds. Um, but really, uh, for to, to use the machine as it's designed, you would want to uh, keep the, uh, the door shut, the window shut, and really build up the uh, the density of positive and negative ions. And w that's why we recommend it's uh, continued operation. Set it and forget it, leave it, at, leave it on, uh, and leave the fan speed on as high as possible. That's a great answer. Thanks for the great question. Any others? Uh, that is it for now. I, I want to talk about how it's a uh, naturally uh, occurring phenomenon that we're able to recreate. I was joking that you got hit in the head with lightning. Yes. Uh, but that was to trigger your memory for this part. This is really good stuff. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm really buzzed about uh, providing you this little uh, bit of detail. <laughs> um, Mother Nature already has uh, her methods of cleaning the air, and it's through, it's through lightning storms. You know, uh, rain is designed to keep our, our grass and trees growing, uh, followed by uh, uh, lightning. Lightning generates billions and trillions of positive and negative ions. And uh, w after a nice lightning storm, uh, people will say that they really love the smell of rain. Hmm. Uh, but what they're really saying is they love the smell of clean air. Uh, because Mother Nature, after uh, those massive uh, lightning bolts, um, all the VOCs and pathogens and uh, pollens and uh, everything that's not supposed to be in the air, uh, when that lightning strikes, it's brought down to the ground. So that when you come out of your home after that little rainstorm, you're smelling that beautiful fresh air, that clean air, and you're like, hmm, I love the smell of, of the rain. Uh, when really you're saying you, uh, you love the smell of clean air uh, thanks to bipolar ionization. So these units uh, are generating positive and negative uh, ions at high volume, massive scale, uh, and it's recreating that lightning in a bottle effect. Um, so really, we're able to... Uh, Harness the powers of Mother Nature inside two sized black boxes, one designed for 1,000 square foot spaces and another larger one designed for 4,000 square foot spaces. And you can start breathing cleaner air uh, in this, by the same methods uh, that Mother Nature already provides for us. That's awesome, Kevin. And you know, we've joked around a bit today, obviously, but you know, in all seriousness, you know, these, these machines help a lot of people, um, especially during the pande pandemic, COVID. Uh, we've helped a lot of people, one, not get sick, and two, just feel normal. And I don't know if anybody's looked outside lately, um, you know, the air quality isn't getting a whole lot better in most places. Right. So, you know, breathing clean air is, I believe, a fundamental human right, and this machine helps people do that. That's a big part of life, Kevin. I think it's uh, such a tremendous tool uh, that when you, when you look at the history of this unit and you look at some of the things we've faced uh, uh, over the last 100 years, 
you know, World War II and the benefits of bipolar ionization, uh, helping uh, the message uh, about the war get out to the people uh, who are concerned about their loved ones. Uh, um, how when OSHA was a big concern and silicosis was at the top of everyone's uh, list of concerns. And then now with uh, COVID-19, the same, the same tool uh, is, is able to make gravity work faster. And it's just funny that uh, how often over the last hundred years uh, we've needed yeah. gravity to work faster. So uh, they're a great investment. They're a great piece of technology. And I wouldn't be surprised when the next thing comes that they'll find uh, another, another use. So um, if you've got any questions, please give us a call. Uh, we've got our 800 number uh, scrolling on the bottom as well as our uh, website. Uh, where you can find our ionizers uh, on, online under the dust collection category. So uh, hit us up with your questions. Uh, act, well, we got another question. Is there, other than filters, is there any maintenance? Uh, the question is, is, other than the filters, is there any maintenance? No. Uh, plug the machine in, set it and forget it. Uh, clean the air filter uh, if you're in a normal uh, retail, residential, consumer, commercial setting, uh, just as frequently as you would change the filters uh, for your air conditioning unit. So uh, if you're in something a little bit more uh, dirtier than that, uh, you'll want to increase the level of frequency, but there really isn't anything else to change. Uh, I'd recommend not sitting on the unit. Uh, you'll notice we're sitting in chairs. It would have been really funny if we were sitting on top of ionizers uh, with an ionizer as a coffee table, but uh, don't sit on them. Uh, the caster wheels will break. Uh, and why would you want to tip over a 140 pound box uh, to swap out a, uh, a broken wheel? Nice. Uh, how many do we have left in, in, we have two facilities. We're at our Denver facility with the ionizer wall. All these are gone from our first session. They're already done, so no one can get their hands on these, but we do have stock in Minneapolis, right? Yeah, we got a, a, a good amount of stock. Uh, we're looking to sell out before the end of the year, uh, 2021. We've got some, uh, uh, we'll have some more ionizers ready for you, but for what we've got currently in inventory, we're looking to blow these units out, and then uh, 2020 with an ionic bang. There you go, awesome, good stuff. Any other questions? Oh, well, thanks everybody. Oh no, we didn't talk about uh, financing option. Oh, financing options. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna love this. Uh, you can visit nationalequipment.com, uh, visit the dust collection category, uh, check out the ion 1K, check out the ion 4K. You'll love the financing options that we have available. Ion 4K, you can get as, uh, as little as 100 bucks a month. The ion 1K, you can get for under 70 bucks a month. So uh, take advantage that's of that's the great- a no brainer. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Start breathing cleaner air for as little as 100 bucks a month. That's uh, less than most people pay for TV or their cell phone. Correct. Correct. No brainer. And after a couple of years, you're done, you know, uh, <laughs> with the payment. Oh, right. Sure, of course. The cell phone payments, they don't stop. <laughs> My daughter keeps texting. And this one is not for sale, but she might be after this session. We don't know. That's Lila, my border collie. She, uh, she wanted to join the show today. S depending on the setting, uh, you can change the air filters uh, if you're in a, 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 a commercial setting, a residential setting, like an office type building. I would change the filters as often as you change your air conditioning filters. If you're in a, a, an industrial setting where that concrete dust is present, that sawdust is present, you're on a dirtier air job site, I would clean it every, uh, uh, after every project. So order a machine, order a few filters with it, right? Yeah. Because you yeah. don't want to come under the scenario. Well, you know, it's probably not going to break, but you, you shouldn't run this without the filter. It'll damage the internal components, right? Um, so make sure you have a few and change it. Yeah, I'd order things. in quantities of 10 uh, yeah. uh, if you're of that industrial type, that dirty job type. Otherwise, uh, 10 for a residential, unit, a residential user or a uh, commercial building user, 10 is going to last you all year. That's great. Uh, I would recommend continuous operation. The pool on, the question is, uh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. This Dr. Pepper wasn't caffeine free. Um, <laughs> it's not Dr. Pepper in there either, by the way. The question <laughs> is, should you turn the ionizer off at night? Uh, and I say no. The best is to build up a high level of ionic density. Um, and these units have, uh, I know we're talking about electricity and millions and billions of ions, but they actually have very low amp draw. I think it's maybe less than three. Uh, three amps, so really, really low power pull, uh, low energy costs uh, to run the unit. 
Um, and with continuous operation at the highest fan speed possible, uh, you're going to build up that high level of ionic density mm -hmm. so that as new things, new, new bad items get introduced, they're driven to the ground uh, as quickly uh, and expeditiously as possible. Yeah. I run mine 24-7. 20, yeah. Um, I, you know, I'll give it a break every once in a while, but definitely at night. It has a nice little, little hum to it, kind of like a fan. Yeah. When you introduce it into yeah. your home environment, you're going to find a little bit more dust uh, after those first few days. Uh, so don't get uh, bashful about vacuuming. Uh, that's just mm -hmm. all the dirty air and all that uh, residual dust uh, that's just in the air. It's been brought down to the ground. So uh, when you run it, don't be surprised in that first week if you double up on vacuuming. Uh, but it's after that thing. first week, yeah, it's a good um, clean your air. Next question, is there life expectancy in hours for living creating ion injection? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, so I don't even know that one. Dude. We project the life, so the question is, is, what is the lifetime of an ionizer? And the answer is, is we project the lifetime of an ionizer somewhere to be somewhere between 20,000 and 40,000 uh, hours. Um, we just haven't had a unit uh, uh, reach that lifetime yet. So uh, we project it to be uh, several years uh, of usage. And when is at the end of that several years, do you think you should have replaced the iron bars, or do you have to replace the Great question. So uh, after mm -hmm. the, once, the, once a uh, ionizer has reached full maturity and it can no, no longer ionize, uh, what should you do? And so the good news is, is your, your caster wheels are going to be fine. The steel cabinet's going to be fine. Uh, the electrical componentry that uh, uh, the transformers, they should be fine. Uh, we can swap out the ion generation uh, rods uh, for both the 1K and the 4K. So uh, uh, after 20,000, 40,000 hours, uh, you don't have a really expensive paperweight or a really large one. Uh, we'll be able to get you uh, set up, uh, replaced, uh, and back to ionizing. Oh, one other thing to note, too, it is, I don't know if you talked about variable speed fans. So you can turn it down at night if you want. Yeah, you can turn it down. Uh, you'll, uh, I love my ions. So I, 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 I Yes, I, you do. I can, I can attest to that. You do love yeah, it. Um, I keep it running on high uh, outside my office and inside my home uh, all the time. So uh, I always recommend it at high speed. You'll find that the industrial fan at high speed is really, really loud. Uh, so if you've got a meeting or you want to have a quiet dinner, uh, you could turn it down temporarily, uh, half speed, quarter speed, um, whatever the sound level uh, is appropriate for, for whatever you're doing. And then when you're done, turn it back on, T turn it at high speed, uh, keep, it, keep it running all the time. That's great, Kevin. So the question is, uh, what should you do uh, when you're in a, an environment uh, that's larger than the ion 4K's capacity? And I love my answer. Buy more. Hmm. Yeah, and even, even places with high ceilings, you can mount them along the walls and things like that. So, so the ion 4K's is designated for 4,000 square foot spaces. Uh, we're, uh, a, a part of that description is uh, an assumption of 8 to 10 foot ceilings. So if you're in a... Uh, a larger warehouse environment. These are like 30 foot ceilings. I, yeah, probably. So you can assume this, this you know, cubic feet wise, this is maybe 100,000 square foot. Uh, so uh, you would want to run multiple uh, ionizers if you wanted to ionize this entire uh, warehouse. Um, I'd say probably four or five, right? Yeah. 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 So minimum. Um, or you could just uh, look to ionize a, a designated area where people are going to be congregating. Uh, and that, that can be sometimes confined to less than 4,000 square foot spaces if you wanted to get away with one. Nice. Next question. How much wind do you need it front and back to get good Ooh. Yeah. So you're going to want to keep uh, – the question is, uh, what's the clearance like? Uh, uh, what's the clearance clearance? <laughs> what's the clearance clearance? How much space uh, between the walls uh, should the ionizer be? Uh, and I say that you want to keep it maybe about a, a foot – uh, to two feet, uh, so about a third of a meter or half a meter mm -hmm. uh, for our uh, non-American friends, uh, mm -hmm. non-imperial, yes, our good. metric users. I just love uh, converting and uh, on, on the fly. Uh, the if you if you leave it sucked up against the wall, 
Um, you're not going to get any airflow, uh, which means you're just going to be creating uh, millions and billions of ions that kind of just sit inside the cabinet. So you're going to want to keep the ionizer uh, about a foot or two away from the wall, uh, give the unit some airflow, some space for airflow, uh, so that it, it can do its job of distributing high volume amounts of ions. Amazing. Absolutely amazing, Kevin. Really good stuff. Other questions? Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining the session uh, Coffee Talk here with uh, Kevin Boudreau. Like I said, these are sold from our first session, so we're pretty much out of stock at our Denver facility, but we do have stock uh, in Minneapolis. So get your orders in uh, now before the, uh, the stock is gone. So thank you everybody. Have a great thank day. Thank you for having me.